Now when I think of hijab, I think of modesty, beauty, and strength. Before, when I didn't wear a hijab, I thought of oppression, um, terrorism. In a lot of Western countries, there's this strange idea that head covering is a Muslim thing. In fact, um, the roots of head covering uh, go far, far beyond Islam. Muslims did not invent the head covering. Hijab symbolizes power to women, not inferiority. My name is Samane, and this is the story of the head covering worn by Muslim women known as the hijab. I was born in a country in the Middle East, and now I live in Vancouver, Canada. A few years after arriving in Canada, I stopped wearing the hijab, but I know and admit that the hijab is more than a piece of cloth on one's head. Although I still do not wear the hijab, the concept of hijab has always stayed with me. I often ponder the meaning, relevance, and significance of the hijab for my own life. But I'm not alone in this revisiting of the baggage of hijab every once in a while. In many Western countries, most recently the Canadian province of Quebec, the morning. subject of hijab is highly controversial. Under the guise of defending secularism, the piece of cloth, which is sacred to many, has become the subject of political controversy and party politics. I am not a political person, and I resist very abstract academic thinking. But I did want to understand and learn more about hijab. I wore the hijab for the period of my research and I engaged myself in conversations with four Muslim women with different takes and experiences with hijab. Nadia is an immigration consultant who wears hijab occasionally but does not believe in hijab as an essential part of her faith. In my immediate family, none of us really wear the hijab. Um, my mother doesn't wear the hijab, um, nor does my younger sister. Dina is the reverse. An immigrant from Egypt, she works for a non-profit fundraising support organization. She practices hijab in full. It seemed like the, the natural step that I was going to do it eventually. That's what I was raised to think. And I even wore it before I, I should. Majida, raised in Canada, is an ambitious grade 12 student. She grew up with hijab in Canada and at times gives public lectures on hijab. I did start wearing it at the age of nine, but it wasn't really because it was like per my personal choice. It was because everyone else was doing it and it was just a good thing to do. But I think as soon as I started reaching high school, it was kind of society was going against me. And that's when I first started to learn about myself and what my morals were and what I wanted to do, who I wanted to be. And I think hijab was one of the things that helped me understand who I was as a person. And Razma is a second year university student who never wore the hijab during her childhood, but has recently developed new relations with this Muslim female dress. Now when I think of hijab, I think of modesty, beauty, and strength. Before, when I didn't wear a hijab, I thought of oppression, um, terrorism, something I would never, ever do. I would even say, I would even tell my friends, I would never be caught dead wearing a hijab, and I quote that. That's exactly what I say every single time. And now look at me. I'm, Representing it well, I think. <laughs> I also visited Eva Saju at Simon Fraser University in Vancouver for her insights on the Canadian Muslim experiences with hijab and also its historical point of origin. In a lot of Western countries, there's this strange idea that head covering is a Muslim thing. In fact, um, the roots of head covering uh, go far, far beyond Islam. Muslims did not invent the head covering. Like most practices, it has both religious and cultural origins. So the religious uh, point of origin is that there is a verse from the Quran which instructs women to drape a covering over their bosoms and generally to dress modestly. And this has been interpreted by many Muslims to involve covering the head. Why? Because at the time, uh, there were women in the prevailing culture, not Muslims, particularly Byzantine women, who customarily covered their heads. It was a sign of status. 
Working women in the fields didn't do it. Wealthy women who could afford to did. And so the sense that covering one's head was an attractive thing to do and an appropriate expression of modesty and perhaps of status became quite popular. Now, this practice has often continued outside of Muslim societies as well. You can still find it in Spain, where a traditional dress for women involves a black sort of uh, shawl covering over the head. It's common in conservative Jewish traditions for women to cover their heads with a scarf or with a wig. And of course, there are uh, Catholic and Orthodox nuns who habitually wear not just a head covering, but in fact a full body drape. So the sense that it's some strangely Muslim idea is quite an erroneous concept, really. In the West, however, females covering their heads in public is a practice exclusive to Muslim women. On the outside, the way Muslim women wear their hijab looks very similar. But in fact, there are a variety of motives drawing Muslim women to wear the hijab. A great variety of reasons why women are increasingly choosing to wear the hijab in some parts of the world. Uh, one of them is, of course, uh, religion. That there are women who sincerely believe that covering the head is a requirement of Islam and they're doing it as an expression of their faith and as a piety. The first thing that comes to my mind when I, wear, when I hear the word hijab is a Muslim woman or Islam. The reason why I wanted to wear hijab is that I knew for sure that my religion said that explicitly or, or the people that, that I trust who interpreted uh, the verse believed so. So it just, this is why it felt natural. I wanted to do it eventually, so why, why not now? Then there is the cultural uh, reason. There are some women who have grown up in places where this is what women do, and so it's part of a larger group identity. So a rural woman from some, some parts of Nigeria, for example, uh, who grew up with the veil, everyone in the village wears it, may not be wearing it for an overtly religious reason, but it's mixed up with a sense of identity and place. Personally, for me, um, because I was born and raised in the Middle East, um, the hijab represented a particular culture that people were from. Um, and so if I feel like I'm being made to feel self-conscious because I'm not wearing one, then more likely than not, I'll end up wearing one. And I'm comfortable with that, and I'm fine with that. For me, I've never used the hijab personally as a statement to express myself, because that's not how I express myself. I've used it as a means to be respectful to the environment and the culture that I'm in. Then, of course, there are the political reasons. And this, perhaps, is the most interesting factor and responsible for the uptick in the number of women wearing the hijab. And this has two, uh, two tracks. One of them has to do with globalization, with the spread of images, um, both of a certain Western secular version of modernity, and also with a movement that resists that image. And in this sense, the hijab is a, an expression of difference. It's an expression of an identity that doesn't fit into uh, the mass spread Western modern model. What comes to my mind when I think about hijab is liberation. I feel like it liberates me from a society that's constantly trying to put down women for trying to be who they are and trying to cover up. And then of course, in terms of politics, it's impossible to ignore the effect of September 11th. What September 11th did was to dramatically heighten tensions and negative images of Muslims, particularly in the United States, but also in many countries in the Western world. In America in particular, attacks on Muslims went up 1,600% after 9-11. Now in this context, there were some women who didn't wear hijab before who decided to put it on. And it was an expression of making one's Muslim identity visible in a context in which it was seen as under attack um, and very much uh, increasingly alienated from American society. I was someone who would never, ever wear hijab. And ever since 9-11, these terrorist attacks and whatnot, I've 
thought that, wow, this is not what Islam stands for. I am someone who likes my religion enough to still be a Muslim, but do I want to take the next step in being a representative, almost like an ambassador of Islam? How can I do that? How can I be someone who shows Islam with, because without wearing hijab, no one's going to know I'm Muslim. So with a the hijab, they'll be like, hey, she's Muslim. Hey, she's a good person. Wow, she's doesn't look like she's going to blow up any second now, you know? So, yeah, um, I've been thinking about it. And then on the night of, in Muharram, the night um, Hazrat Abbas got martyred, um, in Afghan tradition, we wrap uh, cloths or scarves around an alam. And I was helping my mom at the very end fold all of them together. And I was looking at this one hijab, it was absolutely beautiful. And she was just, I was just holding it. I'm like, Mom, what do you think about hijab? And she's like, well, I don't know. Like she kind of like had a little smile inside. And she's like, is my daughter thinking about this? <laughs> so I've been thinking about it. And then I went home and I thought about it. And right the next day, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I never thought about it. I'm just going to do it. And my sisters were all like, are you crazy? You know, like none of them wore hijab. And they're like, you know, it's a lot of responsibility, pressure. You're in high school. You're in the middle of grade 10. What are you doing? But... I just did it and I wanted to represent Islam the best that I could. I was in the middle of editing this film that the province of Quebec proposed Quebec Charter of Values. Modeled based on France's version of secularism, the charter would ban Muslim women to wear the hijab in public. The charter has provoked the outcry of many Muslim hijabi activists, including Fatima Ali. A Muslim convert, Fatima, told me more about the rationale behind the charter. The pretexts are the, what is uh, being stated publicly is that it's a form of neutrality that they want to uh, impose or suggest uh, equality between men and women and um, basically they're trying to eliminate divisions. But that's what's being stated on one hand, but then on the other hand, I know pa uh, Pauline Marois has also done an interview in Le Devoir where she specifically stated that Muslim women who wear the hijab and who work in daycares or who are educators are very susceptible to incite children to start practicing religion. So at the outset, or you could say that she's making a general statement against all religious um, observation, but I think at the core of this is really about the hijab. And even Thomas Mulcair has said the same thing in a radio interview where he stated that um, he feels like there's scapegoating going on and the scapegoat in this particular incident is Muslim women. This kind of targeting of hijab, however, is not specific to states. At a social level, there are many incidents reported in national media indicating attacks against Muslim women who wear the hijab. Dina shared her experience. Some people might look at you as different or strange and they want to know more, they're curious about you. But they always want to know about where I'm from, what I do, and some of them are like attacking. They can literally tell you, you are a violent, you have a violent religion and ignorant. That actually was told to me, you have a violent religion, an ignorant religion that is trying to um, like control females. But, but the people, right, that we call in our, my culture, Islamists, mm -hmm. are the people, right, and I don't agree with it, okay, mm -hmm. but the Islamists are practicing true Islam. Well, I guess you, okay. you, 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 you even can though, even Even though I'm their enemy, right, mm -hmm. uh, they still, they have the guts Actually, practice I their think religion. Real Islam is not about those political issues, but if you no, want to, if you want to think that's about the propaganda, yeah. you wish you are the <laughs> people that haven't got the courage to practice your own damn religion the way it should be practiced. There is a popular belief that hijab represents gender difference and therefore gender subordination. And this is a view that you can find in Canada, but also in, in France, in the United States, in the UK and other places. Part of it has to do with the idea that difference must mean inequality, and this is related to the legacy of slavery and apartheid. Separate does not mean equal. And so to require a radical separation of the sexes is now taken to be necessarily to indicate that one uh, has a hierarchy over the other.
My mom grew up in Afghanistan, and she went through a period of her life when she would have to wear the burqa every single time. When she lived in Afghanistan, she, yeah, she had to wear it. Even when she went outside, she wore it everywhere she went. And she came here, she totally took it off, and she's like, I'm in Canada, I'm liberated, and I'm free. And she's kept that story with her for forever. And then later on, she ended up wearing the hijab and whatnot. But that stuck with me, the beginning of the story, not the happy ending, you could say. And after learning a bit, hijab isn't oppression. The Western and Eastern way of thinking is absolutely different. Western way of thinking, they think that we are oppressed because of the veil. But Eastern to Western, they think that Westerns are oppressed because of media, because of what beauty is. Islam teaches that beauty is inside of you. But what Western and the media here, what do you see in magazines, on billboards, on TV? There's so much oppression with media that makes girls so depressed, cutting themselves. Oppression is cutting yourselves. Oppression is going on these diets. Oppression is not eating absolutely anything just so you can be that one figure. My oppression that they somehow see is just this hijab where I can do absolutely whatever I want, whenever I want. I don't feel oppressed at all. I'm the happiest person ever because I don't look at media and I don't say, I don't look up to uh, J-Lo. I don't look up to Jennifer Lopez. I look up to Bibi Zayna, Bibi Fatima, and trying to be the best Muslim. If you look at how great they are compared to how great Jennifer Lopez is, like, yeah, she's a great person. She donates here and there, but do I want to dress all scandalous? My hijab has helped me free myself from those unrealistic expectations, and I've granted myself the power to say to the world, you know what? I am much more than what you physically see. My appearance should be the last thing you notice in me. That in itself is an idea that redefines the standards of freedom. Let's be real, though. There are many women who love to doll up, including myself. All women like to feel beautiful, and there is nothing wrong with that. The problem comes when this is taken advantage of, and appearance is put above all other characteristics that women possess. When have we ever seen an ad about how women's intelligence makes her extremely attractive? My hijab reminds me as an individual that I want to be judged based on my personality and traits that make up who I am as a person before my appearance. Hijab is asking to be heard before seen. Contrary to popular belief, hijab doesn't mean oppression. In fact, it indicates the opposite. Hijab symbolizes power to women, not inferiority. All humans demand respect. And why should women be treated as mere objects, valued or devalued based on their appearance? My name is Mujeda, and I am what I like to call a proud hijabi. Thank you. Well, one of the problems with, uh, with a lot of Western conceptions of the hijab is the idea that women who wear it are being forced to do so. That somehow there's a, there's a big bad father or husband or brother at home who's insisting that this girl or woman put this on before she leaves the house, otherwise who knows what. And in fact, in most cases, this simply isn't true, that women are choosing to do it or not to do it for reasons of their own and reasons that may be quite diverse. They don't all put it on or take it off for the same reason. So the first thing is to realize that for most women, the hijab is an exercise of agency. And to try and legislate that a woman should either put on a certain form of clothing or be forbidden from wearing that form of clothing is really a violation of the agency of the women involved. A lot of girls, this is just my personal opinion, a lot of girls think they wear hijab for men. They think they wear it to help, I guess, in a way, control the lust of men. And I think that's a big misstatement. I think women should not be wearing a hijab for men. And a lot of people think it's meant to hide your femininity. And I don't think that's true at all. I don't think the purpose of hijab is to make you less feminine or make you less like attractive in any way. It's just to make you feel more modest, to make you feel like you don't all constantly have to be dressed a certain way for men, for, like those who, women who do dress for men, not the women who dress for themselves. And that's why a lot of women who choose to wear it feel more comfortable being covered up. 
where there are a lot of women who don't wear hijab and that's fine because that's how they feel comfortable but there are a lot of women who want to choose to wear it because they feel comfortable being covered up. A woman has to be convinced with wearing it. Um, if, if she wears it only because her parents told her or her society pressured her into wearing it, I don't think she's, she's purely worshipping uh, God and this is even a, a worse um, like a worse problem because I don't believe that God is going to send us to heaven or hell or we're going to be punished or rewarded for our behavior solely based on how we look in appearance. We are mainly judged by intention. And this is why if a, if a girl is covering her head or covering her body because she doesn't have the guts to take it off, I don't think it's worth it and I don't think she's, uh, she's being rewarded for that. The reality is that hijab represents more than just a dress for these women. For them, hijab unfolds a certain history, religion and culture without which the individual feels robbed of her identity. I learned that when I asked my interviewees a rhetorical question. I asked them if they would be willing to take off their hijab in exchange for a large sum of money. Fatima told me about the message their responses send to the liberal feminist advocates of Quebec Charter of Values. Let me think about it. Five million dollars. How long do you want me to take it off for? <laughs> How about a week? No. Absolutely not. Because I'm not wearing hijab for this world. I'm not wearing it for anybody except God. And if I will be rewarded, inshallah, in the next world with even more benefits, why would I accept a worldly five million dollars that would probably be gone in the span of like a couple of years? No. No, not even a moment. Like, I would do it because I'm curious uh, to take off the veil and see how I would look like, but I won't do it for money. And even, even if I did it for the money and I got my, uh, my patio and everything, I don't think I'm, I'm going to respect myself later. And I know, like, not every girl should share this with me, but I really, I really care about how I, I was raised to really care about how I think of myself. This would be the expression to the Parti Québécois that there are people who will not submit themselves to the Charter of Values and regardless of what, if they even go forward and it does become law, which it, it won't uh, unless other parties in Canada actually support this, but for some reason if it should become law, there are people who will um, openly oppose this by not submitting to uh, the Charter who will probably pick up and move out of Quebec. Feminism is about recognizing the agency and the autonomy of women. And so if a woman decides that as an expression of her faith or an expression of uh, her political affiliation or cultural identity, she chooses to wear the hijab, I think that the main concern is whether she's choosing to do it. And if, as many studies have shown, it is an act, a voluntary act by most of these women, then I think the issue is uh, basically empowering women to exercise their agency in the way they see fit. That empowering a woman's choice is about letting her do what she sees she wants to do, not telling her what it is she ought to want to do. That's in fact precisely what feminism is supposed to be arguing against, the telling of women what it is they ought to be doing. So it's, it's a, a weird, uh, uh I don't know, concept or dichotomy or whatever, the, you know, it's very hypocritical the way they speak out of both sides of the mouth. Um, you know, we're pressing forward for the freedom of women, but yet when a woman says that I consciously choose to dress like this, you're telling me, no, that's not right, and that I have to change the way, and if I want to be free, I have to be like this. So therefore, you're taking away my freedom to be independent in the way that I have determined to be. So then you're just being a double oppressor. Poets accuse language of a certain inability to communicate human experiences. Although I do not wear the hijab myself now, there is something deeply spiritual about its experience that language fails to communicate. In my conversations, I tried to elicit the inner experience of hijab for these women. Nadia, an occasional user of hijab, seems to invoke much of the way I have related to the spiritual aspect of hijab. That moment that I get when I feel like I want to wear the hijab, that feeling is a feeling of deep warmth. It's a sense of, it's like,
a sense of completion almost. It's like I, I was missing something before and then I get that feeling and then I wear it and all is complete. Would you think everyone has to wear the hijab? Or do you think it's subjective? Well, I would like to say that I want everyone to wear hijab. I would love everyone to wear hijab and everyone to be on the absolute same page. But from the family I've grown up in, I believe that hijab is meant to be worn whenever you are ready to. Because hijab is a really personal thing. You sh it, although there are guidelines, I think, personally, if you feel like you're being modest, if you feel like you are pleasing your God, or you're pleasing yourself, you're being yourself respecting your body, basically, I think that can be considered a form of a hijab. Because hijab just means to be covered up, to be modest. It's not a specific, like, wear this, wear that. I am still undecided about wearing the hijab, but making this film helped me to better identify with my culture and religious heritage and become more conscious of the extent to which I wish to assimilate in the consumerist aspect of Canadian culture. So